Welcome back to the Python tutorial series. I'm so glad you're here. In this video, I will discuss why to download an integrated development environment to write your code. I will then walk you through how to download and set up Visual Studio Code, and finally, how to link Visual Studio Code to GitHub. The timestamps are linked below. So let's dive right into the video. So you may be wondering, what is an integrated development workspace? An integrated development workspace, or IDE for short, is software that you download on your computer to see your code. It has great features such as code highlighting, autocomplete, and error underlining, which makes it easier to write and debug your code. If you are following this tutorial series, you will notice that when you write your code in the Python Essentials tutorial on the web or on other platforms, your code isn't saved. Well, what makes IDEs great is that it enables you to save your work so that you can go back to your previous work and make complex programs over time. So that solves this issue. There are lots of free IDEs that you can download. In this tutorial series, we will use Visual Studio Code. What makes Visual Studio Code unique is that you can code in almost any language on it, including Python. So how exactly do you install and set up Visual Studio Code for Python? Well, you can download Visual Studio Code by searching for download Visual Studio Code on the web or by using the link below. That will take you to this screen where you can download Visual Studio Code for Windows, Mac, or Linux operating systems. Once you download the software and run the executable file, you can then open Visual Studio Code. Once Visual Studio Code is downloaded, I'm going to create a folder to put all my code in and then open it on Visual Studio Code. Open folder and I called it YouTube. So that will pop up on the left. So now let's create our first file by hitting new file and let's call it hello world. You don't need to know this right now, but I'm just printing a basic program called hello world we'll talk about this in a later video you might notice that there's no highlighting but if i save this file as a dot py file by renaming this it will tell visual studio code hey this is python and it will color code it. But on your screen, it might not color code it because you don't have Python installed. In the bottom right corner, you should see download Python and download PyLint. That will enable you to successfully run your code like this and be able to play it. And it says, hello world. And that's how you make Visual Studio Code suitable for Python. Now it's great. We have successfully solved the problem of how to save code on the computer. But what if I wanted to get access to it online? Well, there's this cool thing called GitHub. It enables you to save your code to the cloud. It's basically like Google Drive, but for code. And also there is a giant community. So make sure to get GitHub by going to www.github.com.
the link is also below and create an account. And next up, we'll link this program with GitHub. So you may be asking, how do you link Visual Studio Code with GitHub? So the first thing you need to do is create a GitHub account. Once you can do that, you can go to the upper right hand corner and hit new repository. You can name it anything. I'm going to do YouTube. And you can make it public or private. Public, anyone can see it. Private, only you can. I'm going to make it public and then hit create a repository. Once I do that, in the top, I should get a URL. And this is how I'll be able to link Visual Studio Code and GitHub together. I'm going to copy this command, git remote add origin, and the following link because we'll use it later. Going back to Visual Studio Code, you will want to download two extensions to enable GitHub. GitHub pull request and issues and git lens. The extensions tab is right here on the left hand side. Once you do that, you will want to see if you have git installed on your computer. You can type git version. It should come back with a version name like 2.24.3. If it comes back with nothing, you don't have git on your computer, so you will need to download it. If you don't have git downloaded, type in download git into the search bar and then click on it and then download it for Mac, Windows, or Linux. And then you'll have it installed. Once you have Git installed, you will need to link that with Visual Studio Code. So go to this icon called Source Control and then hit Initialize Repository. Once you do that, you'll see a little U here next to hello world.py. The U means untracked. First, we're going to need to commit this. Commit is basically telling the changes that you made. The first commit is init, short for initialize. And then hit the check mark. Once we commit it, we can click on the right three dots to push it. But wait, we can't yet. It's an error because it's not linked yet. But remember, we copied from Git this line of code that I'm going to paste earlier. Git remote add origin, then the URL, and then we're going to hit enter. And then there we go. Once that finishes syncing, we can then push it to GitHub. And then it's going to say, oh no, it has no upstream branch. Well, this is the original branch. So we're like, yeah, that's okay. Then once that finishes, we can then go back to GitHub to make sure that it's there. And refresh the page and look at that. Hello world.py. And we can click on that too. And we'll see. Print hello world. And the code is right here. Now, what if we wanted to make a change to this? Well, we can do that by going back to Visual Studio Code. And if you don't have Visual Studio Code, you can do it directly from GitHub by hitting the edit this file. But let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Once we go back to Visual Studio Code, let's say we wanted hello world exclamation point. Let's run this and hello world exclamation point. It's gonna pop up with an M here saying modified. So let's commit this change by saying added exclamation and commit that. And now it's saved. Now let's push this to GitHub. Now 
GitHub has a push and pull. You might be wondering, what exactly is this? Well, push means that you're pushing something up to the cloud, up to GitHub, and if you wanted to pull something down from it, it's called pull. Conveniently named. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow along with this video series by subscribing and hitting the notification bell or by clicking on the next video so that you can expand your knowledge about Python. And as always, I can't wait to see you next time.